Good morning to you on this Wednesday morning. Today we continue our consideration of the Proverbs from chapter 6, verse 20 through to the end of the chapter. My son, observe the commandments of your father. Do not forsake the teaching of your mother. Bind them continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk about, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk to you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching is light. And reproofs for discipline are the way of life, to keep you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Do not desire her beauty in your heart, nor let her capture you with her eyelids. For an account of a harlot one is reduced to a loaf of bread, an adulteress hunts for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Or can a man walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched? So is the one who goes in to his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her will not go unpunished. Men do not despise a thief if he steals, to satisfy himself when he is hungry. But when he is found, he must repay sevenfold. He must give all the substance of his house. The one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. He who would destroy himself does it. Wounds and disgrace he will find, and his reproach will not be blotted out. For jealousy enrages a man, and he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not accept any ransom, nor will he be satisfied, though you give many gifts. So here we have some clear teaching and a clear warning. The clear teaching is to keep the commandments of God. If we have had godly parents, we can be grateful for the foundation they laid in our lives. Wherever we have received the word of God, we are grateful for those who have taught us. Bind them continually on your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you are awake, they will talk to you. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching is a light. God's word is a lamp and a light to our feet. And it enlightens us and shows us the right way to live. And then we have a warning against adultery. We have a warning against being enticed into sin. And we are told that you don't get out of it again. It's not wise. The wise thing is to do is to remain pure, to remain holy. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Or can a man walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched? And this is really relates to not only the sin of adultery, but to any sin. Any sin will burn us. Any sin will hurt us. We need to flee from sin. In times of temptation, we need to resist the devil. And we have the promise that if we resist, he will flee from us. God will help us. With every temptation, there's an escape. And if we take that escape straight away, we will be safe and secure. We have God's word that teaches us, that leads us and guides us, and his spirit who helps us. So today, let's thank him now and ask his blessing over this brand new day. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for a night's rest. We thank you for a brand new day. We thank you for the teaching of your word, for the clear guidance that is given to us, for the clear warnings in your scriptures. Help us, Lord, to be doers and not just hearers. May we take note and do what we hear in your word. Lord, we are so weak at times and we realize we need you every hour. We need you every moment. So we ask you once again, Lord, that you would take us today by the hand, that you would lead us and guide us. Fill us in you with your Holy Spirit. Help us to remain focused on you. May our eyes not wander to the left, to the right, but straight ahead to you looking at your word. In times of temptation, give us the strength to say no, the wisdom to flee, the wisdom to resist, knowing that if we resist the devil, he must flee from us. So we thank you for that promise. We also thank you for the promise that you are with us always to the close of the age, that there is not a moment when we are alone. So Lord, we just thank you once again and bless you. We ask your blessing over this day. We pray for the sick and the dying and all who are in need. We do commend to you, Lord, the those who are grieving. We pray, Lord, for those who are confused and hurting and angry. We pray, Lord, for our leaders and all who are in authority. These are very difficult times. It's easy to criticize the government, but we pray for them and ask that you would give them wisdom and help them make the right decisions. And we pray that you would help us, Lord, to obey and to do the right thing. We recommit ourselves to you and we ask your blessing, Lord, over this day. We pray, Lord, for our hospital workers. We pray for the scientists. We pray for the pathologists. We pray, Lord, for, for those who 
uh, working yourself hard, taking tests and administering vaccines and doing all the things that need to be done to try to keep us safe. Lord, we just pray that you would have mercy upon us and upon this world. We thank you, Jesus, that you already have and that you died for us. And we know that what lies ahead is something beautiful and wonderful that we can't even comprehend. But till that day comes when you take us home, may we, Lord, patiently live out this life reflecting you wherever we go. We commit all to you and ask that you would hear us now as we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow. God bless.